Hello, I'm John Madsen and this is Building a Web Crawler, Episode 3. In this episode, we're going to start implementing the test-driven development design pattern. TDD is a methodology where an application is developed unit by unit and tested unit by unit. This is called unit testing. In order for test-driven development to be successful, each functional unit of a program needs to be designed so it can function and be tested independently with unit tests. We'll be adding a new Java project that will contain our unit tests and wire up our existing code to be called from our unit tests. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to design your application so that it can be unit tested, so I won't. I'll show you. We'll need to add a new Java project. Click File, New Project, select Java Application, then click Next. Name the new Java project with a suffix that indicates it will be used for unit testing. Now, we'll set up a package for each type of unit testing. We'll need to test business objects, data access and repositories, and helper methods. Start with unit testing our business objects layer, which is domain, anchor, and web page classes. Create a new package indicating it is for business objects unit testing. Add a new file, select JUnit Test Class. Name the class BALUT, where BAL indicates it's a business object layer and UT is unit testing. Click Finish. Select the most current version of JUnit to be used. Now, we'll run the new unit test class. It will initially throw an exception because there are no runnable methods. There are also default methods that have been created. These methods provide the framework to set up and tear down the unit tests. This means if your unit tests require data from a database, dependency instation, or data cleanup, you can set them up, tear them down, and clean up any test data to reset the unit test state. Any unit test method needs to have a special decorator, which is signified by the app sign and test. So far, we don't have much to test, but we do have the JSOUP method that gets the JSOUP document. Create a new test package called Web Page Load from Web. The naming convention I follow is a prefix of the class and a suffix of the method name. Run the unit test to make sure that it builds and runs without exception. Now, we'll start writing our unit test. Use an assert true test. Assert true takes two arguments, a string and a boolean statement. The string is usually a message which is only displayed when the test fails. We'll hard code the test to pass, then to fail to see how it behaves. To do a real test, add a reference to the page collector project so that we can call our business objects. We'll set up the test for the web page class. Since the web page class requires an anchor object and the anchor class requires a domain object, create those first. Create a new instance of the anchor class named anchor. Add an import to the business object's namespace. Next, create a new instance of the domain class named domain. For now, we can use dummy data for the domain hash and anchor hash values. Use http www.jsoup.org for the domain URL parameter. For the anchor, we'll use the same hash and URL values as we used for the domain object. Create an instance of the web page class named the web page. Use the anchor object as a perimeter for the web page constructor. Now call the load document from web method to get the JSOUP document. For our unit test, we'll test that the JSOUP document is not null. This means that the load document from web method has functioned correctly 
and set the class member document variable with the instance of the JSOUP document. Since our unit test is testing the type of JSOUP document, we'll need to have the JSOUP library added to our unit test project libraries. Add the JSOUP jar to the project as normal. Run the unit test again, and we should see it run successfully without exception. If we comment out the load document from web method call and run the unit test again, the test will fail because the variable document has not been set. In this episode, we created a new project for unit testing. We created our first unit test for JSOUP and tested a pass scenario and a fail scenario. In the next episode, we'll refactor our project to separate our business objects from the main web crawler project to its own Java class project. We'll also update our main web crawler project and our unit test project to work with the new class library.